So I'm going to start off part 31. Welcome to part 31 of the Fortunate Andrews 1865 pipe organ installation at Tango Towers and of course restoration. So if those of you who have been following from the beginning, we started with the bellows, we've done all the action, we've done the soundboards and a lot of this is now playable. So we've now got the open diapason in, apart from five notes, which are in the left-hand tower. There's three front pipes and there's two wooden pipes behind on the pedal chest yet to be overhauled and installed. So the right-hand side is finished. We're putting in the pneumatic tubing and we're about to start on rebuilding the pneumatic touch box for the pedal board. The parts came the other day and so did the bill for 230 quid plus VAT. Um, so... We have, because we've been able to put the, the rest of the tuning slides on the uh, open diapason, it meant that we could put the rest of the open diapason front pipes in other than those five I mentioned. So that's in tuned and regulated. So we've got the open diapason, the stop diapason, the bell gamba is now in. So it just leaves the four foot flute and the 15. The 15th is the ranker pipes I had made brand new for this organ. So we're going to get on with the touch box. So really all we have to do is the touch box, the pedal board, the left hand pedal chest, and then fitting the, cleaning the four foot flute, and then fitting in the brand new 15th. Now those two stops, the four foot flute and the 15th, share the same position on the soundboard. Um, the 15th is nearest the passage board and the, the four foot flute is one back so we haven't cleaned that yet we'll have to have that on the bench and it'll have to be fitted properly so here we go over to this bench I think we're now in the last six or eight weeks of this job I need to get this building turned from a workshop into into what it's supposed to be um, right so we have here the touch box and you saw me dismantle that on a previous video. So I decided to change all the valves, all the wires. We got two or three bent wires. When I came to take those bent wires out, I discovered that the thread which had been used was not an organ building thread. It was more of a machine screw thread. And that to me isn't acceptable. So um, I said with that, didn't, with the 230 pound bill that came with it, we've had all new wires made and all new work. Uh, um, felts and things so these are going to get I'm just going to cut them out we'll be putting new buttons on uh, let's go over to the box of parts so we've got these pallets are a little bit thicker than the previous ones it really doesn't matter we've got fiberboard discs we've got springs these are intended for key springs uh, for when you're doing electrifications of key action and another type. So that's what we got for our 230 quid plus these custom manufactured threaded wires which have, let's see whether we can see that. I'm just going to zoom in in such a way that you can see it's plain, threaded, plain and threaded. So it's so that we haven't got threaded going through the actual hole, so there's nothing for it to catch on. So I'm gonna photograph these carefully and just so I can put them back the right way. And then we're just gonna cut them off and we're discarding all the materials. So at this point, I've taken all the old valves out and I've cleaned it off. I think we'll just vacuum those holes out, just in case. Hoping not to vacuum any of those leathers up, they're absolutely fine. So now we'll set about making up some new ones. So I've left the 
leather buttons on that. So what we're basically going to do is replicate 30 of those. So the things to note about these, I've done the first 20 out of the 30. First of all, I've run through the leather buttons with, let's find, make sure that's actually in shot, with a 1.8 millimeter drill. There we go, the leather buttons. So got a 1.8 millimeter drill bit out and I've run through those with a cordless drill because sometimes these can be a bit, a bit too tight. These are tighter than the ones that we're on. I, I'm not sure that they've not used second hand. Some of these are stupidly slack, but then there we go. You know, I know it's 1984 and it's, uh, it's nearly 40 years, isn't it? So what I've done is to replicate one of these. So I've used that one as my sample. They're all going to be pretty much the same and the valve positions will have to be uh, adjusted individually. Now, there's a flat side to these buttons and there's a domed side to the buttons. And you'll see that on this, it's domed to domed in that center. And so all these have gone on domed to domed. And I've actually put them all on from this end and I've popped them in the chuck of my cordless drill. I make this so much easier. You need to be putting tallow on this end and then you can run the drill with the thing in your hand, with the button in your hand uh, and do it so much quicker. Uh, we were allowed, to, when I did my apprenticeship, we were allowed to use a hand cranked uh, drill, not an electric one. <laughs> He didn't, he only had one electric drill in the entire workshop other than the vertical pillar drill. Uh, and uh, it was in 1930s and he had a quarter inch chuck. You know, so even today, the most cheapest of electric drills have, has a 10 millimeter truck, uh, truck, which is three eighths of an inch a chuck. Um, so it's so much quicker doing it this way. So that is the first 20. I've made sure we've got a point on both ends. I did order these without a point because they charge you. <laughs> and being a tight-fisted Yorkshireman, what it takes two seconds to put a point on on the on the grinder, so I haven't. So that's where we are. Twenty out of thirty. So I will carry on. About a week later, because it's very time-consuming to do, all these valves have been made. So we've got new wires, new buttons. I've reused the. Um, mo to the most part, the leathers, the leather washers they put on. So the top valves are, are, are new. These lower ones, absolutely perfect. So I've recovered those uh, instead of making new ones. I did buy the materials in, but there's no reason to make those. We'll just put them into stock. So that's all 30 after those valves now put in. So the idea, uh, if we can see that on camera, is that the one closes the other opens and so on. So we've got this spacing hopefully correct because you've got no way of telling except by taking out and carefully measuring and I'll show you what if I did that. Took these photos as it was being dismantled so I did it in inches, I did it in centimetres so that we can... You, you know one of the things, I don't do things all inches, I don't think do things all metric. I have a tendency to use inches where possible but you know what, if something, if you've got a piece of wood and it's 12 inches long and you need to cut it in half, well, you'll cut it in at the six inch point. But if I have a piece of wood and it happens to be 40 centimetres long, I'll cut it at the 20 centimetre point. So I, I just use both as necessary. This happened to be, the spacing was two centimetres plus a bit, and that's how it worked out. So I took these photos, I did that in inches if it worked out better in inches, we looked at the valves on the far side, which is that side, as uh, before I took it apart. And of course, this is why we've done it, because of the moth damage to the felt, even though it was done in 84. And on that photo, 
you can really see they've been chomping away at that. And there's that possibility that although there's a, a piece of leather there against the piece of leather on the timber, because that's lost its integrity, chances are that that's going to start leaking. Plus the fact that they've got bent one way or the other. So there we are. So that's the photos. Oh, there's one more. Oh yeah, back to the, uh, the measure. So the next thing I've got to do is to fit the springs because this uh, returns yes, the springs on this side. So we've, what I've done, the springs we took out, um, the springs we took out are those and the springs I've bought are these and they're intended for the back of keys. When you're putting an organ on electric action which has previously been on uh, say mechanical action, the because the the key touch, in other words, when you press a note, the fact it's got depth, the key touch is done by the springs in the soundboard, which I've shown you all that. But if you've got a keyboard which isn't connected to any action, of course, it's not going to do anything. So you have to have return springs, and they are intended to convert um, keyboards to, say, electric action. So it's just a matter of bending these and... Uh, working out the kind of force we need to set it to. But I felt that was the nearest product that I could buy. So these are corroded and some of them have snapped off. So what I'm gonna do, we'll start putting that together. So we're just moving now to the base end pedal chest. I didn't show this in detail. I ended up having to make a new eye there because it was broken away. So we've cleaned all the pallets, we've greased all the steady pins, and everything is painted and ready to put back together with the pneumatic action. And I'm kind of going a stage further because what I didn't show is what I've actually spent three weeks doing, which is this touch box. So I'll pull that down carefully and just make sure it's in frame. So I've modified this dramatically. The springs that were in it we've changed the type of spring, which is what we can get and adjust. So we've had to expand the, um, the depth of the well of this to take the different works that I've had to put in. So now we've got these pieces of black leaded dowling going through a register. It's the original register, but it's expanded to take the dowling. So now, hopefully, they work and return so that was a lot of time put into it. So the next course of action is to fit the pneumatics back. We've already checked that these are working. Just going to finish cleaning them off, hook them back up, and hopefully that's another thing that wants painting. So I wanted to get this uh, part 31 of the video out, but I wanted to demonstrate the touch box which we've just shown you working on the right hand pedal chest, but unfortunately its wind supply comes from this left hand pedal chest. So until we've got that up and running, we can't do that. So we're not going to show it working, which is a shame. So we'll come back to this in a bit. Right, so that's all back together. So there's three or four new wires between the motors, the leather white things. These are pneumatic motors and because it's upside down. I did notice there was two cracks there, they've been filled in with cobbler's wax. So that's ready to be installed. And that'll be the next stage. Oh, so this is the biggest pipe in the organ. It's the bottom C on the 16 foot board on. So it has a speaking length of eight feet. It's actually about uh, 10, 11 feet in length. It's quite a, a width. So we'll be putting that in next. That's been cleaned, painted and overhauled. So as we draw this part number 31 to a close, the two pipes we can see there are the bottom two notes on the C side of the open diapason, the ones that don't go on the front pipes, which will be there. So you've got C, D, E, F sharp, G. So once we've done these, we can spray the three final front pipes and put them in. 
but there's something more important and I'll come to that. Um, so we've got, I've had to take the cap off this and it's, it's actually snapped in taking it off. Let's just bring this viewfinder around so I can see what I'm doing. So this has had to be glued, I've used a modern adhesive and clamped and then when we, next time we've got a brush with some black paint on, I'll go back over this again. So we've got the two original screws here and then we've got a, a new screw the same size and the last thing to do is to put this cap on. So with my grease pot handy, once the cap was off I was able to remove what was left of the screw satisfactorily whereas two of them on this organ have, have broken off and we've had to drill down the side. So they're all greased. Let's get a screwdriver. Right, well, I'll go and put the blower on. So bearing in mind we'll still have some whimpers. So on the other side, oh, it says, that's the one I've just done. That's the one next to it. Slightly slow to speed. The other side. So some of those are on front pipes that aren't in. Good. So we've got two more notes installed. So on the grate, that's... And then with its principal... So it's sounding quite nice, especially if it was in tune. We've done the tuning enough for doing the regulation, but you're not the tuning out when you're doing the regulation. We're still bashing the organ around, of course. So I, what I'm doing, I'm not going any further with this pedal chest because of what I'm now going to say. Tomorrow is Monday. It's the week, it's the Holy Week leading up to Good Friday. And the vicar has asked me to connect up to Zoom and join the meeting from here. And she wants me to play the organ from here. So this is going to be the first time it's actually going to be used in a remote church service. So that's, uh, that's, so the, that's what an organ's for, that's what the, I've got these here for. So we're going to now, I'll just move the camera around. So your swell's on the left, the grate's on the right. You've got these two slides with no pipes in yet. The one to the right here is the four foot flute and the one here nearest the passage board it's the brand new 15th we've had made, uh, replacing a Dulciana which had been put on stupidly in the 1920s and obviously removing the original 15th. So we had this 15th made just so. I'm telling you this uh, because what we're going to do, we'll abandon the pedals chest, we'll get on with that and I'll tell you what, by the time we get to Good Friday, chances are that four foot flute will be in and working. So that's what we're going to do. and. Because they're both attached, both the 15th and the 4 foot flute are attached to the same upper board and therefore the same rack board, uh, we've got, kind of got to do them together. So we're going to set up the, um, that upper board and the rack board on the table, that'll be the start of part 32, and we'll start altering the rack board uh, so that we can fit the 15th. Once we've got that fitting, we put the 15th back in its box, put all this back together and put the four foot flute in. I'm not going to put the 15th in the organ until everything's tuned because with me being the, the size I am, it's going to be difficult to work up there with that. Uh, I'll be touching it with my bottom and, and uh, knocking things out of tune. So we'll leave that till the end. So there we are, very satisfactory, but we're just going to do things a slightly different way just so that we get a little bit more for this holy wheat. Holy Week Zoom meeting. There's that pedal chest we put in. There's that biggest pipe, which is actually in, which is the bottom C pedal board on. 
and the one we've just fitted the cap to is the one to the right. So there you go, we'll leave it at that. I'll just change the shot to uh, the front. Thanks for watching part 31.